Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation with complex numbers. Z is a complex number, what is a complex number? If you're new to complex numbers go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I have another channel which focuses mainly on trigonometry, algebra and number theory, a little bit of geometry here and there and it's called cyber math, cyber with s. Okay, so we're going to be solving this exponential equation. How do we solve exponential equations? A lot of times we use the natural log, but if we natural log both sides here, like ln, that's what I use for natural log. Some people use log, which is I, something that I use for base 10, uh, but unfortunately Wolfram Alpha and other people, some people use it for natural log, which is kind of sad, but what can you do? Anyways, this is the natural log and if you natural log as sum, you're not going to get anything out of it, almost nothing, because uh, there's no rule that turns it into something else. If you have the log of a product, it'll turn into the sum of two logs like this. Of course, A and B, if you're talking about real numbers, they have to be positive, but we're in the complex world, so we don't have to worry about it. And then um, we have the quotient rule, and uh, which turns into difference. And then we have the power rule, which tells us that, hey, you can move this. This is one of the properties that is used the most, especially in these problems. But there's nothing that turns, this is some type of transformation, right? There's nothing that turns as sum into something meaningful, right? Even though this is going to simplify, the left-hand side is not going to simplify. Make sense? So you can't really apply it to a sum and expect something. But in some cases, we can solve equations using this. So what are we going to do instead? We're going to use a different approach. By the way, I said that this log thing does not apply to a sum, but the exponential function does apply. It's inverse, right? You can use it, uh, for example, if you have a sum like a plus b, you can do e to the power a plus b, and it'll just turn into e to the, e, e to the a times e to the b. So it'll turn the sum into a product, which is nice. And there's something called a homomorphism and group structure, so on and so forth. Anyways, that, those are, that's abstract algebra. Let's keep it complex, okay? So how do we solve an equation like this? We can't use logs, so eventually we might be able to use it, but we kind of need to simplify. One thing that's good about it is that the exponents are always the same. Here's what we can do, though. We can divide everything by the same thing. For example, I can divide everything by 9 to the power z. Why would I do that? That's a good question. You can do it, but I have a better idea. Why don't we divide by the largest base? I mean the expression with the largest base, which happens to be this one in this case, right? So let's go ahead and divide everything by 25 to the power z because that's going to give us something nice. By the way, how do we know that this equation is nicely solvable? Let me give you a secret. Are you ready? Okay, there you go. Multiply the 9 and 25, they're both perfect squares, correct? You get 225, and that happens to be 15 squared. Of course, that's not a coincidence. It's arranged that way. That's the only, um, that's the only time this is going to work nicely. And you can also approach it a little differently, like take the square roots 3 and 5, multiply them, you'll get 15. Make sense? So that's the secret sauce. Let's go ahead and get into the solution. So we're going to go ahead and divide everything by 25 to the power z. 9 to the z divided by 25 to the z. 25 to the z divided by 25 to the z. You probably know what it is, but I just wanted to show you that I'm actually dividing everything by that. And now this is 1, right? And now these two things, I mean the fraction, you can write it as 9 over 25 to the power z. Uh, so that you can use a common exponent. And the same thing goes here. And guess what? 15 and 25 have a common factor. Now, here's the million dollar question. Can we do this when z is a complex number? What's a complex number? Z equals a plus bi is a complex number. Again, use the lecture videos if you're new to complex numbers. Or ask questions. Questions are welcome. I'm pretty sure someone... Uh, me or someone else will be more than happy to answer it. Great, so let's go ahead and simplify this. Uh, 9 and 25 are 
Squares of primes, they have no common factors. 15 and 25 do have a common factor. Divide by 5, you're going to get 3 over 5. So let's rewrite it one more time with the simpler base. And now here's what I want you to notice. Because 9 times 25 was 15 squared, this is how it works. 9 is 3 squared, 25 is 5 squared. In other words, 9 over 25 is 3 over 5 squared. But if you raise both sides to the power z, this is still true, right? So if you call this something, how about w, which is another common representation of a complex number, this will be w squared because it is. So we get the following, w squared plus 1 equals w. This is not omega, it's w, okay? They're a little different. Now, how do we solve this equation? It's quadratic. Come on. You see, you see the power of substitution and power of division and the shortcut that we kind of checked early on. It turns an exponential equation that's like impossible to solve without turning into this, which is a quadratic. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And then we're going to solve for W. Let's solve and then we're going to back substitute. Okay. That's the trick. How do you solve it? Quadratic formula, whatever you like to use, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And of course, you can write it as 1 plus minus root 3i divided by 2. If you write this as 1 half plus minus root 3 over 2i, you'll probably recognize, hey, these represent cosine and sine of some angle, special angle, because if w squared minus w plus 1 is equal to 0, then you can multiply both sides by w plus 1, and then it'll turn into sum of two cubes, which is also 0, but this means that you are dealing with cube roots of negative 1. Of course, negative 1 is not a solution because it's not a solution of this. It just comes from multiplying both sides by w plus 1. So we're basically dealing with cube roots of negative 1 besides negative 1. Make sense? So those are the solutions. If you cube one of these numbers, you'll get negative 1. You can check it out, okay? So where did we go from here? Uh, those are the values. Let's go ahead and set those values equal to w, which is 3 over 5 to the power z. 3 over 5 to the power z equals w. Let's just start with 1 plus root 3i over 2. You can write it this way or standard form, no big deal. Next step is going to be the natural logging both sides. But guess what? Before we do the natural log, I think it would make sense if you wrote this in polar form or exponential form. Thanks to Euler, because Euler is the greatest uh, mathematician of all times, in my opinion. I hope you agree with me. If not, let us know. Then we can discuss. But this can be turned into a polar form. It's exponential, super powerful. And that goes like this. If you have something like a complex number, you can write it as r times e to the power i theta, where theta is the argument, r is the modulus. But guess what? Here the modulus is 1 because uh, a squared plus b squared is 1. Makes sense? Cosine and sine. So we're only going to need to worry about the e i to the theta. And theta happens to be, if you particularly try to graph this, because 1 half is... Uh, less than root 3 over 2, it's going to look like something like this. And you're going to get 60 degrees or I could probably uh, use radians here, which is better, uh, pi over 3. So this can be expressed as e to the power i times pi over 3, which also explains why this is one of the cube roots of negative 1, because if you cube it, you're going to get e to the power i pi, which is negative 1 in the complex world. Does that make sense? So it, you can all put it all together. But this is what I'm trying to get at. 3 over 5 to the z equals this. Now I can go ahead and use natural log, but you can also write this in a fancier form, e to the power z ln 3 over 5, or just natural log both sides. It would work the same way. So from here, we basically get z ln 3 over 5 equals ln of this is going to be i pi over 3, right? When you ln both sides, because ln e is 1. Great. So we're going to be finding z from here. It's going to be i pi over 3 times ln 3 over 5, whatever that number is. And can we do the same thing with the other number? Absolutely. 
go ahead and try it out because that's an exercise for you. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.